Manish, Fred Goldstein. How are you doing? Good to see you, Fred. How Good are you? Good to see you. I'm doing great. So welcome to our show here. Thanks for having the me. The Pink Sox Studio, located at I the World Health Care Congress. I great to it. have you here. I should have put my pin on. Oh, Ooh. yeah. What's up with the pin? It's in my bag. I'm sure it is. It's all good. It's it all, good. all good. So how's life been treating you? Very well. Thank you. Good. Exciting so times. It is exciting times, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So how do you see, before we get into maybe care yeah. journey, how do you see this world going on right now with all of the stuff spinning? Positive. Yeah. Through this uh, otherwise controversial political who's up and down, I am a little disappointed about the VA with Secretary Shulkin. Oh, so that was so a very were complicated we. <laughs> situation. Um, but under the hood, the three active ingredients of care delivery reform, the movement to value-based reimbursement strategy, the opening up of data sets held by the government, and the shift of interoperability towards open APIs to patients and to the apps they trust, that movement is continuing almost unabated and so I would applaud the Trump administration in this area because it makes the most sense and we can have a different discussion about bigger issues on right. immigration reform and the like later but this is uh, this is the positive one yeah I, I, I said at one point there were like three key words I would use to describe this healthcare right now crazy dysfunctional and opportunity uh, you is know an opportunity. it really is there's a lot of potential with what's going on to really begin to make a difference but I think that's resonating with people here's a sobering point though today's Washington Post mm -hmm. uh, had a fairly negative article on uh, the rollout of the diabetes prevention program. Right. Now, if you go back in history, 2011, uh, I put up a blog at the White House website to say, calling all innovators, if you've got an idea to change the way we pay for care, we have a billion dollar innovation fund and want to jumpstart this move to value bottom up. The YMCA applied, the program got approved for testing, right? the actuary evaluated the results and said, my goodness, four to one return on investment, better for patients, they avoid go getting full diabetes, lower for the taxpayers. And uh, Sylvia Burwell at the time, HHS secretary, said, I'm going to put this in the, in the reimbursement rule. The Trump administration doubled down. April 1, it goes live nationwide. This is like a great story of changing the way care is delivered. How many patients have been told by their doctors or ACOs or others? That they'd be a great candidate for it. Right. Well, crickets are chirping, according to the Washington Post story. So we've got a last mile implementation problem that is more about culture, mindset, than it is about technology and, awareness. and data. And it's it's like the annual Medicare wellness. When that came out, Same thing. It, 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 the first year or two, uptake was low. Now there are people all over the place talking about it. And I hear providers saying, we can push those numbers up. We're getting more people to get it done. Uh, and it's this I, another sobering point. Yeah. I happen to have a, an IRB approved license yeah. to the CMS national data set. Uh, we just mapped it uh, last week at the NACOS conference. Yeah. Uh, if you mapped all 560 Medicare ACOs, yeah. There's one at 80% of their patients got their wellness visits, but they all cluster, and the average ACO is around 32%. Mm -hmm. So there's as much variation if you kind of did the scatter right. plot. Even within the organizations who have the financial and organizational heft to do it, we're still only at 32% on average. Right. And just so you're aware, I actually got that put into the bill. God bless you. <laughs> Boom. You mean to so, make that a free service? No. To, to Senator Harkin wrote it in as a CPT code after I met with him. That's a brilliant. Well, it's thank you for It's called the Annual you Medicare done. Wellness Visitor Established a Personalized Prevention Plan, and our product to use preventive medicine was called the Prevention Plan. That's a brilliant idea. <laughs> so, By the way, we have to get going on the interoperability standards for care plans. We do. Absolutely. Because right now, they're like blobs of documents that are not really moving around the system all that well. So talk a little about your organization with Care Journey, what yes. you're doing, how it's impacting the system. Well, thank you. Uh, look, my view when I was in government was that if we liberated the linked Medicare ABD file, that is the longitudinal patient's history, we could put this in the hands of doctors, hospitals, and the economic, all the new entrepreneurs that are out there, we would see magical new models come to life. Uh, now that I've left the government, one of the challenges is I had not seen a lot of creativity in the use of that information. Right. So we built an open data utility service. The basic principle is keep prices down and value up. If, if you get a Medicare patient file, you can hand it over to us, we'll process it, and we'll provide for you probably 25 openly available open source algorithms about which patients are getting the care they should, which ones are not. And one of the most sobering ones for me is uh, we've been measuring care transitions. Yeah. We put in, like your your idea of the wellness visit code, 
The country has this uh, uh, up to $200 of reimbursement if a doctor spends a half an hour explaining the discharge instructions to patients after they leave the hospital but are still sick. We've gone back and calculated. Roughly, as of the third quarter of last year, only 12% of the time when patients were eligible for this service upon discharge did they actually get the service. This in the Medicare ACO population. So we have so much room for improvement and part of what we do as a company is we help Medicare ACOs. We about have 53 uh, Medicare ACO partners. We're very proud of our support. We're just an open data utility and they mm -hmm. say, hey, tell me things like this. What percentage of patients by doctor down to the patient level were eligible for this service and didn't get it? So we give you kind of like a year in review, look back trailing 12 months and then you can measure performance it's over gotta time. It's got to be quite the dashboard. It is. <laughs> it could be overwhelming. Right. So there's definitely a challenge. We've been really focusing on the chief medical officer yeah. at these ACOs who are trying to understand clinical interventions. Mm -hmm. And because claims data historically has been used for insurance reports, your PMPM PM, and you're spending too much on the ER, right. that doesn't really speak to the chief medical officer. We want to know who's a great candidate for uh, advanced care planning, right. who's a great candidate for care transition services, and how well are we performing on those models. We speak to that leader in the organization. And as you see that information going into these organizations or these ACOs, the chief medical officer is now getting this stuff, are you seeing those movements in those indicators? We're, we're seeing more attention paid. Uh, uh, the question about how to transmit to the last mile, right. to the physician or the care manager, ultimately even to the patient, remains an open work in progress. So yeah, today, and that's sort of a system process change, behavior is. change it approach. Is. And as you said, yes. you know, Medicare, the annual wellness visit comes yes. out. It's a, it's a great idea. The DPP is a great idea. It's Absolutely. badly needed in this country. I just did a presentation in Mississippi on how, on how you would seek to eradicate type 2 diabetes in the state. Oh my goodness. And launch with the idea of we, first, you got to identify everybody who's a diabetic pre -diabetic. or pre-diabetic, yes. and there are 650,000 estimated, and they're actually starting that program now in Jackson Hines County. What a beautiful with idea! The University yeah, and the FQHCs, and, but then you got to intervene. You've got to take that last mile. Take that question: Will they be doing that de-identified or identified? Well, right now, de-identified. It's through the FQHC. They know their patients. They're going to have them. Well, that yeah. means identified. Yeah, they would be identified. Now, the interesting question is, and this is the quandary for me, uh, when you are a clinic, yeah. you see a portion of that patient's overall care. Correct. So if you had the longitudinal view of you, the Medicaid claims data, you could actually probably do a better job of identifying absolutely. the right population. Do you so, have that? Well, so here's the thing. We, forget me as a yeah. company, I'm a nobody. Uh, the government said there are three legal ways to share that information. Uh -huh. One, you can apply for a license on the uh, Virtual Research Data Center, VRDC. We've applied, we have a license, and that's what gives us the access to the national Medicare file. Yep. And according to uh, CMS last week, they're going to add Medicare Advantage encounters. Right. And now TMSIS, which is the Medicaid data set, will come in next year. So that's one path. That's a de-identified path, but right. one to give you aggregate statistics so I could tell by doctor in Mississippi, to your point. Right, what's going what on? What looks like it. Yeah. The second path is the ACO model. Mm -hmm. So Medicare ACOs, there are a few in Mississippi. Farzad mm -hmm. runs one, I believe, and there are several yeah. others. In fact, we have a few that we work with through our health system partners. Uh, in theory, the state could ask the ACOs to run this type of program within the data that the government's given them. Mm -hmm. That's more longitudinal in nature. Uh, but lastly, the patient themselves can now aggregate this data. So the state of Mississippi could offer a blue button app that says, hey, we'd like, you know, Mississippi healthy or something. Yeah. Please opt in to allow us to access your data so we can coordinate your care better and, and make sure you pull it down through the blue button. And pull it down through the blue button. So there's now multiple paths into well, the data set. I'll go back to them as they just launched this two weeks oh, ago. Oh, God bless them for and doing say, it. And say, here's some other things. I applaud what they're doing. And I've also talked about bringing in other players like a Solera, you know, with the DPP Excellent. on maybe a Don Duo, maybe an Omada, and Yes. really bring in all of these great outside resources and sure. build a complete wraparound. Yeah, I love it. God so. bless you for doing your that. That's a, well, that's a wonderful thing. Thanks. So back to your journey. Yeah. You, you're now providing these folks with unique look at the data yeah. they've got in their memory. We call it say, clinically relevant clinically, insights on yeah. the claims history. And and that, that they can then say, wow, you know, we, we really can focus over here. We need to do a little bit of focus over here to yes. change stuff. That's right. And um, so as your typical 
user or purchaser a plan, a provider? No, 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 no. Medicare ACO. Medicare ACO so, is all So we, we today serve about 53 Medicare ACOs from the very large, like the Delaware Valley ACO, yeah. which is the joint venture between Jefferson Health and Mainline in Philly, to small rural health systems uh, clinics. Uh, including Southern Kentucky Healthcare Alliance, one of the best performing ACOs, uh, in partnership with their uh, management company, Imperium. So mm -hmm. we run the gamut in terms of who we try to support and serve. The basic principle is Medicare is giving you this massive Excel spreadsheet every month. Uh, are you squeezing as much clinically relevant insight out of it as possible? Right, because like you said, they're still stored in the old health plan kind of way. I'm going to yeah. look at this bed day. I'm going to look bed at this stuff. Bed days per thousand. Right. And, and that's important. It is. But, but not that important in the grand scheme of clinical leadership. Because correct. you want to, we, we, the theory was you're going to actually find those patients that you can activate for a program that you hadn't done before. And so do you then provide them with a monthly report? Yes. Here's your monthly dashboard of what's it. going on with all these key you indicators. Got it. You and, got uh, it. and then we can trend that stuff over time. Yeah, so, so every month we add new queries. Whatever's free and open source we <laughs> run. So Professor Ashish Jod Harvard has a segmentation model. Oh, if sweet. you're a frail elder, you have the highest proportion of avoidable spend of any patient segment in the Medicare population. Without having to go through proprietary vendors, you can just run the Ashish uh, score and have it down to each patient level, and that's simple and easy. And then and free. you could set your care management teams, you your doctors, it. up to intervene you up against it. that. Wow! NYU Langone publishes the avoidable ED logic, so in every patient that goes to the emergency room and is released, you can now screen. Should that have happened in the first place? Forty percent of all Medicare uh, ED visits that are treatment released are avoidable. Now you can dr drill down to the individual patient and why. Uh, and then AHRQ, the agency, has an avoidable admissions model. So you can, and low value care for choosing wow. wisely has 23 claims. So you can go down the list and find openly available free queries that, if you organize your data in a certain way, can be run relatively painlessly and you can then have the output to do what you wish and cook your own recipes. We have health systems, physicians who want to create their own uh, segmentation models and we support them in that regard. And Again, we want to be a utility service. We're not venture backed. We right. don't have IPO ambitions. We're just a simple open data service and I hope to be useful to as many Medicare ACOs as the country. Well, that's great. So if a Medicare ACO wants to find you, they go to carejourney.com. Care yeah, and well, they that's can even request enough. a they can request a free benchmark report on their own uh, service, and we'd be happy to facilitate that as well. Well, that's fantastic. Thanks, Thanks so much for, for joining us. Thanks for hearing me out us. on this. Oh, yeah, great stuff, Anish. And what we need to do is get you up on Pop Health Week, and we can talk more in depth I love about it. the care journeys, because great stuff. That's Thank a really you for that. neat area you're working in. You're so very thank kind. you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. <laughs>